Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And I uh, haven't been around for a while, so I'll see if I can jump back into it a little bit. I'd like to continue with the series of A Century of Film Favorites, and it's time to do the decade of the 1980s. So, the 1980s. Um, a lot of changes in my life during the 1980s. Uh, I turned 30 in 1981. That's a big step. 1985 is when I started working seven nights a week. That was a big change of life. Uh, a lot of things, you know, sort of happened because of that, with all the uh, lack of social time, the lack of rest, and all that sort of thing. But I did manage to see quite a few films during the decade, in spite of the fact that I didn't have a lot of free time, like I once had. So let's start off the year 1980. And I'm going to start off with a movie that I don't own. It's a movie that I haven't seen since 1980. And I do have the soundtrack album. So how many of you remember Times Square? How many of you saw this movie? I, I always liked this movie. I, I don't know. If I saw it today, I may not like it quite as much. But I really had a great time with it back in, uh, back in the day when we were all sort of fascinated by the change in music and all that. Uh, change in sensibilities. Um, two girls played by Robin Johnson and Trini Alvarado. They just sort of team up. One is from a working class background. She's very, very street tough. That's Robin Johnson. Uh, the other girl, Trini Alvarado, is from a very wealthy family, and they happen to be in the hospital together. They're in a hospital room, and they become friends. And uh, the tough girl convinces the rich girl, who's not happy with her life, to just run away. And they run away into the, the, the underground of New York, the streets of New York, and they live in this sort of like a broken down warehouse or something. I can't remember all the details, but they, they become sort of famous as underground characters in this uh, punk new wave atmosphere. And Tim Curry is the star of the film. He plays a DJ who kind of follows their exploits. And there's a lot of good music in here. We have people like uh, Susie Quattro, The Pretenders, uh, Roxy Music, Gary Newman, Talking Heads, Joe Jackson, XTC, The Ramones, uh, Lou Reed, The Cure, Patti Smith Group, David Johansson. A lot of good music in this film. And uh, I would like to see the movie again. Check out the artwork there. Okay, so Times Square. So that's one of my films from 1980. The other one is, you could have uh, predicted this, right? Predicted this one. Silent Scream. A slasher film, which is... Not really a bad film. Of course, the reason why I like it is because uh, Barbara Steele is in it. She has sort of a supporting role. She comes in toward the end of the movie and uh, basically takes over. Not a bad movie, really. Has people like Cameron Mitchell, Yvonne DiCarlo, Avery Schreiber, uh, Rebecca Balding as the star. And uh, But it's Barbara. I have a Blu-ray and a DVD. It, it's, strange, it's strange that they would make a Blu-ray without scene selection. So that's why I keep the DVD. I'll probably keep it anyway. But Okay, Silent Scream. Now, 1981, I'm going to show you another movie that I don't own. I saw it when it first came out, and I actually saw it fairly recently. It came back uh, as a revival in a theater. It was, it was a lot of fun seeing it again. But I do own, this is Polyester by John Waters, starring Divine and um, what's his name, Tab Hunter. Great, freaky movie. And I have the original scratch and sniff card for the uh, special gimmick that they had for the for the movie. They handed these out when you walked in, you know, and uh, you scratch these little numbers whenever the number flashes up on the screen, so you can smell what's going on in the movie. And believe me, you want to stay away from number two. That's all I'm going to say. But this is a keepsake, something you do not get rid of, right? Scratch and sniff. Now, the other movie from 1980, this is 81, right? 81 is Mommy Dearest, all about Miss Joan Crawford. Well, sort of about Miss Joan Crawford, based on the book by Christina Crawford, talking about what it was like to grow up with this uh, very high-strung movie star. And... Uh, the movie just made an absolute camp, starring Faye Dunaway, who gives a, an, an eerie performance as Joan Crawford. But uh, how much of this is true, I'm not sure. Nobody really knows, but it's a hell of a film, folks. It's a hell of a movie. All right, 1982. I'm going to show you two movies. One is um, a movie called Diner. 
which is here on a double bill with uh, Liberty Heights Diner. This is a movie that was directed by Barry Levinson, who also wrote it all about a bunch of guys growing up in, um, I guess it's New York. Is it supposed to be New York? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's supposed to be Boston or something. I can't remember now. It's been a while. But uh, people like Daniel Stern, Mickey Rourke, Steve Gutenberg, Kevin Bacon, Timothy Daly, Ellen Barkin, all about these uh, these people growing up in, in the, the late 50s and has all the music and, and the, the, the sensibilities of that time. Uh, beautifully recreated and very well acted and a lot of fun. Diner. And also from that year, one of the best of the Star Trek movie series, Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Probably... For most Trekkies, this is the definitive Star Trek film. I love it. I I wouldn't say that it is my absolute favorite of all the movies, but I do like it quite a bit. Of course, it's based on a uh, an episode of the original series that guest starred Ricardo Montalban, and he comes back and plays Khan, and it is a very, very good film. Very good adventure. All right, next up for 1983, I have um, this classic gore fest from... Uh, David Cronenberg, Videodrome, starring James Woods and Debbie Harry. Uh, super freaky movie. I've seen this several times, and I finally got around to buying this this uh, Criterion edition, which is made to look like a video cassette. It's, uh, how do you explain this? There's no way you really can't explain this. Uh, it's sort of a, a prescient uh, message about television and uh, interacting with television. And, uh, yeah, all hail the new flesh. Yeah, right. Okay. And also from that year, 19, that same year, uh, one of my favorite films of all eternity, this is Educating Rita, starring Michael Caine and Julie Walters, an English film that I saw when I was in England in 1984. And uh, it, it's just a wonderful movie about a working class woman played by Julie Walters who wants to get an education. And she goes to uh, Michael Caine, to, who is a, a professor, who is very um, depressed and, and drunk and unhappy with his life and uh, not a lot, very cynical about learning and all that sort of thing. But he, he's sort of forced into doing these, these tutoring sessions and she just wants to learn as much as she can. He becomes fascinated with her. It's just a great movie. And it's all about, it's about so many things, but mainly it's about somebody who is their life changes because she's she starts she starts reading and she starts uh, expanding her mind. Just a great great message. All right. Next up, this is 1980. It's what year are we on now? Uh, 1984. This is a movie called Red Dawn. Patrick Swayze and uh, a couple of other people. I can't remember who else is in this. Well, anyway, this is a movie that I didn't like all that much when it first came out. Saw it years later when I picked up this used copy. And now I love it. I just like the whole message of it. Plus, it's great to see uh, Patrick Swayze back when he was young and healthy. It made me realize how much I miss having him around because he's just such a cool actor, such a great image. And uh, it's a very good story. I think it's a story that uh, has a lot to say for us today, uh, to us today. All right. Also from that year, Jim Jarmusch, his classic Stranger Than Paradise, starring John Lurie, uh, all about um, a couple of Hungarian immigrants living in New York City um, don't have a dime, kind of street hustlers, and uh, they're, one of their cousins from Hungary, a young woman, comes to visit them. And uh, well, no, I guess I guess just she's the cousin to one of the guys, but she come she gets uh, to be very close friends with both of them, and they just have these bizarre adventures, and they end up in Florida. It's very very strange. Def Stranger than paradise. But a movie that I've always liked very much. All right, next up, 1985. I'm going to show you um, my favorite Scorsese film, After Hours. Okay, uh, that's going to be a very unpopular choice. Uh, Griffin Dunn, as a, a guy who works in an office, who is very bored with his life, and he decides to uh, have an adventure in Soho in New York City. He gets involved with some really... Bizarre uh, people and antics, people like uh, Rosanna Arquette, Linda Fiorentino, uh, John Hurd. It's a very cool movie. Um, and I just, I, I guess I'm being sort of tongue in cheek and saying this is my favorite Scorsese movie, but I like it very much. It's very, very funny. All right. Also that year, Silverado. I, I saw this when it first came out. Never saw it again until fairly recently when I picked this up at uh, the uh, family video when it closed. 
So I saw it again the second time and loved it. I have forgotten just how much fun this really is. Kevin Costner, uh, let's see, Kevin Klein, Scott Glenn, Rosanna Arquette, John Cleese, uh, Brian Denny, no, Brian Denny, sorry, Danny Glover, Jeff Goldblum, Linda Hunt. Wow, what a great movie. Who, who directed this thing? I don't really. Lawrence Kasdan, okay. Yeah, great movie. Great Western. All right, next up we have um, 1986, and I'm going to show you my favorite Woody Allen film. And uh, I know that the the ongoing saga, the very sad uh, conflict between Woody Allen and Mia Farrow is, is very disheartening. And I'm not going to tell anybody what you should think about anything that's going on. Uh, but this is a, a great film beyond every other consideration this is a great great comedy with a mixture of drama and very life affirming and uh, it would be nice if woody and mia could just sort of i don't know find some sort of meaning in the minds this is a great film uh woody allen michael kane mia farrow carrie fisher barbara hershey lloyd nolan marino sullivan daniel stern max von Sydow, and diane weist fantastic movie all right also that year i'm going to show you uh my favorite of the original series Star Trek films, this is Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home, and uh, it's a very, it has a lot of uh, great action. It's also very funny, and uh, it's just my number one. Okay, all right, number. Uh, let's see, yeah, number 1987. I'm going to show you this Criterion release, directed by John Sayles, who also wrote it. Matawan. This is based on a true story of miners in. Um, West Virginia back in 1920 who were trying to trying to establish a union and uh I don't remember all the details because I've only watched it once. Chris Cooper is the star of the film. It's um in some ways it's not easy to watch. It's it's very brutal and it's very uh sad in a lot of places, but it just shows the uh strength of the human spirit and it's it's a very American story. Uh great, great film all the way around. And of course, the best film of that year. You knew I was going to show this, right? Back to the beach. Frankie and Annette, uh, 20 years after they uh, left the beach and moved to Ohio and had a couple of kids and became very middle class and very boring, they decide to go back to the beach and see if they can uh, reclaim their old spirit. And it's it's very funny. I, th I think it's a good movie. Some good music. It's, it's, not a, it's not... I mean, actually, the music in this one is probably better than anything that any of the other beach parties had uh back in the 60s but uh yeah this is a very good very good flick okay uh let's see next we have uh i'm just going to show you one movie from 1988 because i don't i don't have that many movies from 1988 but this kind of sums up the entire year this is the original hairspray okay starring divine with uh ricky lake sunny bono uh debbie harry um jerry stiller just a great great film john waters um has some good music in it too so forget the remake i don't like the remake very much at all this is this is the one you want to see all right now finally from 1989 uh i used to be a big fan of baseball i'm not i'm not anymore I just kind of lost my interest but i used to love baseball and there were two great baseball films from that year who couldn't be more different from each other one is this very mystical field of dreams starring um kevin costner and james earl jones and the other is Major League, which uh, isn't mystical at all, but it's it's just great fun. This has Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, Corbin Burnson. So if you, uh, I guess you don't even have to like baseball just to enjoy these movies, right? All right. And finally, uh, something completely off the wall for 1989. This is a movie that I I picked up somewhere. No, I think I saw this on cable, and I really enjoyed it back when I used to have HBO. And I, I picked up a copy when I, when I finally found it. This is called Slaves of New York, starring Bernadette Peters and Adam Coleman Howard, whoever that is. And uh, this is just a very interesting movie about this, this young woman who fancies herself as being an artist. She's trying to, she makes hats, right? And uh, she's very, a very nice person, but she has a hard time connecting with people. And she's sort of, she is a slave of New York to, to the the uh, social scene that she's trying to be a part of, and uh, all the all the things that are 
all the obstacles about living in New York from day to day and not having much money and all that and trying to trying to survive. It's a very good movie. It has a lot of great uh, cultural artifacts from that time, the way people dressed, the kind of music that was going on, the way people lived, the apartments and all that. Just a very good movie that I've always liked. Anybody else seen this? I never hear anybody talk about it, but yeah, I still like to watch this. Good movie. So that is... That is my uh, experience of the 1980s, and uh, sorry to keep you so long, and I will respond to anyone's questions or comments. Take care, folks.